Hi, I'm Messianic Michael and today we're talking about uh, successful science projects and identifying the goals of the project and uh, possible venues for uh, presentation, competition, publication, and so on. And even though a lot of the uh, venues are competitive, I want to remind everybody that uh, the, the main point is really to uh, learn the scientific method, to have fun, and to generate student interest in science. And this is an uh, elementary school student whose dad contacted me for help uh, with his uh, guitar-based science project. And his dad's goal was that the student would become familiar with the guitar and get to execute a science project with the guitar uh, for interest and enthusiasm. All right, some of the goals. Uh, some of the goals are very modest and simple. For example, a school assignment that can be completed in a weekend. Uh, always we want to become familiar with the scientific method. Hopefully we have some fun and it's a good family time as the parents and the students uh, work together. Uh, we like to uh, uh, build confidence. Uh, the competitive aspect um, I'm not that really big of a fan of because a lot of times the competitions can become stressful for students and students focus more on the outcome of the competition rather than being satisfied within themselves that they've done a good job and that they can recognize within themselves what it means to, to do a good job. Uh, some other considerations, we want to know what level of project we want to do, what kind of expenses we can uh, spend on a project. Is this like a $10 trip to Walmart for materials, stuff we have lying around the house, or uh, some of the more involved projects, uh, sometimes the parents and funding sources end up spending a few thousand dollars on uh, likewise, from a time point of view, we're talking about five hours on a weekend or a one-day project, or we're talking about maybe a project that takes uh, many months, uh, hundreds of hours or something like this, and uh, is the goal to just compete and present, or is there a publication type goal? Uh, for example, this is a couple of cadets I was working with at the Air Force Academy, and uh, their goal was, was to publish the paper, and you can see in the background, uh, they measured the uh, blast of a uh, rifle primer with the pressure sensor at the muzzle uh, of the rifle. All right, so discussing some of the venues, uh, there's the Intel affiliated or the ISEF affiliated. ISEF is sponsored by Intel. Uh, there's regional, state, and uh, international finals. There's a Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, a Stockholm Junior Water Prize, and a number of other opportunities uh, to present uh, results and to compete. All right, the uh, International Science and Engineering Fair, uh, this becomes the holy grail for many students uh, because it's held annually in a U.S. city and uh, it includes an all-expense pay trip to whatever the city is and there's uh, 1,500 or so projects from uh, throughout the world. It's a very high level of competition. Uh, most students walk away with uh, cash awards and certainly just having been uh, to the ISF finals is, is a tremendous uh, resume enhancer and uh, usually ends up yielding scholarships for college even if the scholarships don't come directly. Uh, it's just such a resume builder. Uh, state science and engineering fairs are also uh, very popular. A high level of competition uh, not only in the big states like Texas, but also a very high level of competition even in some of the medium-sized states like Ohio, Colorado, Louisiana, uh, and so on. And the way you get to the state science fair is you get nominated from the regional fair. Usually there's some criteria like finishing first or second place in your category, but it can vary with the regional fair, so check your rules on what it is that needs to happen to earn the ticket to the state science and engineering fair. And usually the state fairs have both a junior division, 6th through 8th grade, and a senior division, high school. Uh, and it can be very uh, prestigious competition, uh, lots of special awards, money, plaques, trophies, uh, etc. Uh, the regional science and engineering fairs um, are at the level one step below state. There's junior and senior divisions. Some regions have elementary school divisions. And usually there's nominated by the school fairs, but if your school doesn't have a science fair or if you're homeschooled, uh, many times direct entry into the regional science fairs uh, is possible. And depending on the sponsorship, there can be some uh, rather lucrative cash awards. 
of the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium is sponsored by the U.S. military. Um, the uh, student submits a paper to a state contest and then the uh, judges at that stage read all the papers and then from all the entries, uh, 30 to 50 are invited to compete at the state level, which usually means you go to the symposium, it's like a conference, and you give a 10 or 15 minute talk on the results of your project, and then there's uh, further judging and three to five representatives from each state uh, go to the national competition. Uh, this uh, process kicks off rather early in the year for science fairs as the applications can be due as early as November, some of them as late as January. Uh, the state events are January and February, usually. Um, there's a state website uh, for most of these competitions, and then the, uh, uh, the winners at the state level go to nationals. A lot of times the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium can be useful because even if ISEF or the ISEF affiliated fair is a larger goal, uh, having to write the paper helps a student uh, formulate many of their ideas and then giving the talk at the state level symposium is a great practice run for the judging and the ISF affiliated fairs. The Stockholm Junior Water Prize uh, is sponsored by the Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden and once again you may self-nominate which means you submit a paper uh, to the state level contest. There's usually an April uh, deadline and then there, the state level judging happens without any further presentation and uh, the state winners from just the paper are selected to go in person and compete at the national level competition and the winner of the national level competition uh, goes on to Stockholm to compete in the international competition. Young Naturalist Awards is sponsored by the American Museum of Natural History. Uh, participants can self-nominate submitting an essay uh, from the 7th to the 12th grades and it's kind of naturalism and, and biology type of orientation, but it's more of an essay with lots of photographs uh, with a little less em emphasis on the scientific paper. Uh, you can go to their website, you can see uh, what kind of students and what kind of projects have uh, won the awards in past years in different grades. The Google Science Fair is sponsored, of course, by Google and there's direct entry, there's a hundred regional finalists. Uh, there's a little more restrictive rules. Uh, in other words, in the ISF affiliated fairs and the symposium, there's an a, approval process, a scientific review committee and institutional animal care and use committees um, for using uh, animals and there's uh, rules for hazardous materials. But in the Google Science Fair, for the most part, they just say no um, and uh, a lot of the more fun uh, projects, in my opinion, that have to do with blast and ballistics and animal science are oftentimes excluded by the more restrictive rules. On the other hand, the Google Science Fair does allow use of previously existing data sets. So if there's any data sets or data that's been published out there in some online repository or in a journal, uh, the student can download their data and, and reanalyze the data to test interesting hypotheses. As long as the data is available to the general public, then the science project would qualify for the Google Science Fair. This is also the May entry, is the latest entry date throughout the year of any of the big science fairs of which I'm aware. And so if a project doesn't get started in time to make some of the earlier deadlines, it might be competitive in the Google Science Fair. Uh, I sweep. Um, focuses on energy engineering and environmental projects. Uh, there's a self-domination for a February entry. Once again, a paper is submitted. Uh, the early judging happens to decide if you're going to get invited to the International Fair in Houston, Texas. And if you get invited, uh, they provide the lodging and some of your meal expenses, uh, but the travel to and from Houston for the uh, National, International Ice Sweep Science Fair is up to the student. The Broadcom Masters is the most prestigious science fair available uh, in the 6th to 8th grades. Usually you get nominated by a regional or a state fair. There's not direct entry or self-nomination, but there's an application process after the nomination. And if you, if you find a regional or state fair that's affiliated with the Broadcom Masters, 
then 10% of those science projects in the regional or state fair will be nominated for Broadcom Masters in these grade uh, in the grade ranges here. Then from all their applicants, they select 300 or so semi-finalists, 30 finalists. They bring the 30 finalists to Washington, D.C., all expense paid trip. You get to present the work at the uh, Smithsonian, uh, the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, a lot of, most years they try and arrange for you to visit the White House and meet the President as well. School science fairs, usually this starts off with a teacher uh, assigning a science fair a project to the students that focuses on the scientific method and the experiments can be relatively simple as long as they execute the scientific method properly. And this is a meme from the internet which says how much turmoil the science projects cost families and the materials are, are one kid and one grudging parent, a half-baked idea of dubious marriage and procrastination. Kids yell, parents cry, way too much time, and the findings is that everyone hates the science fair. If this is how your experience is going, I urge you to prayerfully consider a different approach. Uh, science can be fun, it can work. Uh, let's work for ways to take the pressure off of students to inspire to have fun and think of an experiment, usually a fun experiment, an experiment that draws student interest is the key so that they're having so much fun they don't realize that they, they should be stressing. Our conferences, uh, one of the conferences that, uh, that we go to uh, on a periodic basis is the uh, International Symposium on Ballistics and some of the students we've mentored have had their uh, work presented there. But every field of science, uh, every field of fisheries, biology, environmental science, solid state physics, organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, they all have different uh, conferences where work specific to that field gets presented. Great feedback opportunity because you get the, the national and international experts in a given subject at those conferences. It does require a high quality of of work and you need to work with a mentor who knows what the best conferences would be and who can guide through the application process. Uh, publications. Uh, one of the things about all the competitive science fairs is that at the end of the year when the science fairs are over, the work regardless of its quality is lost for future generations. There's nowhere where some future scientists could go look it up and figure out what you did and what your findings were. And this is why we encourage publications. Because when you publish a paper, it's in what's called the archival literature. And five years, ten years, a hundred years from now, other people who are interested in the same subject can find your published report and know what you did and what your findings were and continue to build upon the prior work. The other thing about publications is that we've never failed... Uh, to, to get a, a paper published for a student in the case where we thought that the work was really worthy of publication. Uh, in contrast, science fairs are kind of a dicey deal in that the judging of science fairs tends to be subjective. And from a biblical point of view, uh, for example, Ecclesiastes says that uh, time and chance happen to us all, that the race doesn't always go to the swift, and so on. Uh, so the science fairs are a dicey deal and sometimes aren't as satisfying. The other thing is that even though uh, in Scripture, when we think about the, the biblical mandate to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, a uh, man is given authority over creation to do a good job on science and become the master of the natural realm. But man isn't given authority and a promise that he's going to beat all the other students at the science fair. Uh, uh, on the other hand, when we come to publication, if the work is good, uh, our experience is that it can be published. Uh, there are some cost-effective ways to do it. It can be slow sometimes as you, uh, you send it to an editor. The editor sends it out for peer review. Uh, the peer reviewers can take three, six, nine months to get back. Then you get the, uh, the reviewer's report. You revise the paper to try and satisfy the peer reviewers. They send it back to the peer reviewers and it could be six or nine more months uh, before the paper finally gets approved. Or it could be rejected by the first journal you try and then you're back at square one having to start all over. A publication can also be a lot faster using some institutional repositories. We've gotten uh, student papers published very quickly 
in uh, the Defense Technology Information Center. Uh, the Cornell University Library has a repository, and we've also used uh, Nature uh, Proceedings to get uh, papers published in a fairly quick way. But the publication process can be a little hard to navigate uh, for a newcomer to it. And another option with publications is uh, sometimes papers can get published in the hobbyist literature. Uh, for example, this paper was published in the uh, magazine Rockets, which is the official magazine of the Tripoli Rocketry Association. So, in summary, uh, it's not uh, always necessary to choose the venue beforehand, but it's helpful because it helps establish a timeline. It can also uh, get you working according to rules. Um, and sometimes, uh, some projects, they require approval on the institutional paperwork uh, before the experimental part of the project starts. Uh, but let's not confuse the rules of the venue uh, with good scientific fundamentals. Uh, the scientific method and what's good science and what's science that's in need of improvement don't really uh, depend so much on the competitive venue or the publication plan, uh, but let's, uh, most of the rest of the video series is just going to focus on good scientific fundamentals.